Hi there, and welcome to this video on AQA biology for the AQA specification. Focusing on the topic of biological molecules, and in particular, ATP. I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-level biology with our helpful video tutorials tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button. And whilst you're watching, feel free to leave any comments down below of anything you're unsure about, and let us know if it's your first time watching so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the specification. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson 6 of 8 in this tutorial, covering ATP. This is the sixth video in our series of 8 lessons on the topic of biological molecules. In the last lesson, we looked at the process of DNA replication. Here are the key learning objectives for today's lesson. First, we will look at the structure of ATP, then at its use and synthesis. Here are the AQA specification points for today's lesson. Feel free to pause the video now and read through them quickly before we begin. The first point is to look at ATP. Plants and animals obtain energy from the food they eat, particularly glucose, through a process called respiration. The energy from glucose is stored as ATP. During respiration, the chemical energy stored in foods is converted to adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. This stores the energy in a readily available form. ATP is made in the mitochondria as this is the site of cellular respiration. ATP is a nucleotide derivative. It's unique as it has three phosphate groups. It's made up of the nitrogenous base adenine, which is the same as found in DNA and RNA. It also has a ribose sugar, like RNA. What makes it unique is that it has three phosphate groups, as we mentioned earlier. Now we'll look at the hydrolysis of ATP. The energy in ATP molecules is stored within the phosphoanhydride bonds between the three phosphate groups. In order to release this energy, the bonds must be broken. This is a more chemical view of ATP. It's important you understand what's going on here. The high energy phosphoanhydride bonds are between the phosphorus of one phosphate molecule and the oxygen of another phosphate molecule. At this stage, it's also important to understand the naming of ATP. We call it adenosine triphosphate because we have the three phosphate groups. So if we remove a phosphate group, we get adenosine diphosphate. If we remove another one, we get adenosine monophosphate. And if we remove the last phosphate, we are left with just adenine and ribose making adenosine. So respiration makes lots of stored chemical energy in the form of ATP. So how do we get this energy from ATP? Well, we do this by breaking the high energy phosphoanhydride bonds. Phosphate bonds are broken by hydrolysis. The hydrolysis of ATP will go on to form ADP and an inorganic phosphate called PI. This is catalyzed by ATP hydrolase, which can catalyze the ADP into AMP and a second inorganic phosphate group. ATP hydrolase can break it down further into what we've just described, AMP and PI. When energy requiring biological processes occur, there can be simultaneous ATP hydrolysis to provide the energy required. 
the released inorganic phosphate can be used in further phosphorylation. The phosphate group can be added to another molecule to make it more reactive. This mechanism is carried out by a group of enzymes known as kinases. Our final point is to look at the resynthesis of ATP. ATP is synthesized during respiration and photosynthesis. The majority of ATP in an organism is synthesized during respiration in the mitochondria and during a process called glycolysis in the cytoplasm. In plants, ATP is also synthesized during photosynthesis in the chloroplasts of plant cells. ATP synthesis involves something called a condensation reaction. ADP and PI are relinked covalently to form ATP. The enzyme ATP synthase will catalyse this reaction. We've now covered all the learning objectives for today's lesson. Feel free to skip back through the video and re-watch anything you are unsure about. We've now completed lesson six. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to subscribe by clicking down below and leaving a comment of the topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch the rest of our videos in our A-level biology series, or visit our website, studymind.co.uk, for past paper compilations by topic and specification.